for segment one. It is segment one, right? Yeah, we're still we're still running into segment one. It feels like we've had an entire stream already, but for segment one today, uh, we, Heathen Dog is going to talk to us about the occupational character classes and some other little character traits and so forth that happen in the Rifts Ultimate Edition game. And I have I, my my psychic powers are working. I am a mind melter. I feel it. The Elemental Fusionist is going to be the most talked about favorite class today, right? Wrong. Oh, Scott. <laughs> and what we, got? Uh, <laughs> we actually have a video on the elemental fusionist and i think it's the crazy right that we did like two years ago yeah if you want to find our social media join us on our discord you can go ahead and see those links below we also have merchandise and charity they took three shirts off red bubble oh somebody flagged me oh no i'm so hurt you flagged my channel oh geez um i just have them elsewhere now <laughs> you, you can still find the shirts uh I, i'll let people know in my discord about that and of course if you want to donate to our charity you can see that in the link below or if you're watching on twitch it's right there in a big old panel for you just click that button and give to our charity and of course you can find us on alternative media because people are trying to flag us on youtube and i think it's hilarious please please ban me please show me that that you're a little pansy and, and that you can't handle alternate points of view please ban me just, just stop talking about them. I don't care. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a charity also. Again, you can click that little button. What is this? What is this? Oh, yeah, this is hashtag RPGate, which apparently makes people feel ways about things because we believe that role-playing games should take place in fantastic worlds and that the focus of your tabletop group should be on role-playing and having a good time. The core values. That's right, core. They have to be on the inside. They have to be the epitome of who you are, of hashtag RPGate, and any good tabletop group are escapism, not representation, entertainment over activism, and natural Organic inclusion, not forced diversity, authoritarianism. Wah! All right, I'm done. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me today. That was, that was really weird, but we're going to go with it. Yep. And remember, this is a live stream podcast discussion, not concise step by step tutorial. We may deviate off topic and go on tangents. Please enjoy. Ooh. Ooh. Right. Oh, my God. Yeah, this is getting weird today. What, what is wrong with me? See, you're hungover, oh. and I'm just acting like oh, all. You're acting fool. But... <laughs> This is crazy. Stuff has happened. Oh, I'm not trying to invite people. Let me get this shared on the screen. How about that? Oh, all it's right, called so, present now. Not share. Yeah, what we're going to do today, we're going to look at all of the different uh, kinds of OCCs and choose one. We're going to choose one from each category. Okay. And we're going to not not to do a deep dive of it, but we're going to do an overview of it. So you have an idea of, uh, of what the entire range of classes entail. Now, we're not going over the crazy. Because we did that already. We're not. Yep. We're definitely not going over elemental fusions because it shouldn't exist. I mean, it's it's a pox <laughs> on everyone's house, so it, it shouldn't happen. And a shifter is just stupid. Oh yeah, you talk. Actually, didn't you make a shifter for uh, the yeah. Legion Myth Week live stream? Yeah. So there's actually yeah. a video of Heathen no. Dog making a shifter. Just it's it's just poison. See, I would play one. That, that's no, definitely it's that's just just like back when we talked about the Diabolus at the beginning of the year. Yeah. That actually fits my motif. I like that kind Diabolist, of Diabolist, Summoner, and Shifter. The three worst classes in Palladium. Three worst classes. You know why? Because sooner or later, those three classes are going to be the reason your team wipes. Sooner or later. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, page 43. Hit it 43. So it's at 45 on this. I hey, no look at that. It's 45. I was right. <laughs> going down one page. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, good. you're going to start here? Okay, there I got it. Go. Yeah. All right. So these are the, the occupational character classes. We have men at arms, adventurers and scholars, practitioners of magic, psychics, RCCs, which are only one in this book, and uh, the coalition soldier OCCs. They should be in men at arms, but they're... What are you doing? I'm trying to show each one. I didn't know you were going to go by that quickly. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wanted people to actually be able to read them on the screen there. All the coalition soldier stuff should be over in uh, Men at Arms, but they have it separate just in case you want to make a coalition campaign. These what you have to choose from. That's it. So there you go. So we're going to start, uh, you know, with the Men at Arms class, and it's going to include coalition soldier, just FYI. And we're going to do... Uh, that sexy beast crazy. right there. We're not going to do Glitter Boy... We're going to do... I mean, Glitter Boy is, like... I mean, that's what the game well, was originally going to be named after. Yeah, fair. I, I mean, what what else? 
What's should the, we do what, glitter boy? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, screw it. We'll do, we'll do glitter boy. Okay. That's fine. All right, find find me the page. <laughs> find you the page. <laughs> Are you not prepared for the segment? Oh, look at that well, sexy I was, guy. I was prepared for glitter boy. Another sexy beast right there. Come oh, on. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, you my me- God. Chainsaw sword. Love it. There it is. Page 67. Okay, thanks. Because I would have just kept scrolling down. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. when I play Rifts, I, the class I played the most is the Borg. Yeah. Summon Sizord, Cyber Knight. Wait, what the hell? It's at 67, right? Yeah. Oh, it's three pages off. Okay. So three pages off. All right. So Look, uh, the nerdy ogre, the glitter boy, is the mm, iconic. It'd be true. like me talking about the sword master for Earth Dawn. It's it's you kind of want to go with what's iconic in this. Yeah. The idea behind the glitter boy is you are a legacy robot pilot. Basically, you're you're legacy. Now, glitter boys for most of North America, b- besides some some secret installations, they're not produced anymore. The uh, the Dark Ages, the two hundred years of the of the Dark Ages, the the production of the Glitter Boy was forgotten. I mean, the people forgot how to do it. So any Glitter Boys that you have as a as a character, you got from your father, who got it from his father's father's father, father, and all the way back to you know Nima b- before the fall of the world. So you are part robot pilot, part mercenary, part mechanic. Because you have to keep up your glitter boy, you have to machine parts for it, you have to, uh, you have to maintain it, and pilot it, and pass down the legacy b- before you die to somebody else who you think is worthy. In of fact, that's part of character boy. creation. You yes. actually get bonuses if you're a legacy pilot. Yes. So, uh, of all the mega damage suits of power armor available for Rift's Earth, only the glitter boy is known to have originated from before the Great Cataclysm and remains one of the most powerful, feared, and respected fighting machines on the planet. The uh, the Samus is based off of uh, power armor, or robot power, whatever it is, uh, that, that was before the Cataclysm. Uh, not really before, but based on a design from before so the glitter boy is really the only one that is it basically exactly the same as it was before except it was called the chromium guardsman before is that what it's called in chaos earth yes okay it was called the chromium guardsman instead of glitter boy because glitter boy is kind of like a 70s douche version of a real name well glitter boy reminds me of something where you know like kleenex where it's really facial tissue but whether it's the company logo or just what people continue to call it you know that that it just kind of became the term that uh, you know, that's used. Sandpaper. It's not sandpaper. It's abrasive paper. But sandpaper was the company that. Uh... Yep. I get it. Now, two things uh, move the glitter boy to its own category when you're talking about uh, piloting ro- small robot armor. One is its reflective coating, and two is the boom gun. The reflective coating makes all lasers do half damage. Yep. Which is great because most stuff. You'll see you'll, you, when you read this book, most weapons are MDC lasers. Most. Now, there are some anti glitter boy stuff where they have tunable laser beam guns where you can, you know, tune out the frequency of the glitter boy's reflective armor or some other nonsense like that to make it do full damage. Or you just use plasma weapons and boom, boom, and you can do it. But, you know, it's up to you. And the boom gun. The boom gun is iconic because, well, as you can imagine, boom gun goes boom and it makes other things go boom as well. It's very, it's a whole lot of damage all at once. Yep. And it, uh, uh, the whole reason that it's called a boom gun is because when it goes off, it creates a sonic boom in the area. Now you're in power armor. You're great. But anyone who's not in any kind of armor or vehicle or something like that, they go deaf. Well, e- even even in vehicles, uh, if it's like lightly armored APC yeah. or whatever you have, you suffer. Yeah, if you're in non-environmental armor or a non-sealed, uh, uh, environmentally sealed vehicle, you're 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 gonna get some ear damage. You're, you're, you're it's gonna it's gonna hurt. I got tinnitus because we had a glitter boy in the park. Exactly, exactly. There's a lot of deaf people who run with glitter boys. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, how do dog so, boys feel about that? Oh, they don't feel. Oh, they. I'm sure they feel ways. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every time he fires. So let's move down. And there's a <laughs> whole lot of history on the glitter boy. Oh, here we go. Uh, let me let me zoom out. So yeah, there it is. See it. Zoom out so you can get the whole picture. There now there go. there are a couple of weaknesses to the glitter boy. One of them being is it's not fast. 
No, it is it is a slow, cumbersome thing. It is it's it's a it's a walking tank, and it moves yeah. like a tank. That's basically it. I mean, it's not fast at all. It is it is slow, but it is powerful, and it can hang. So it has somebody told me this was retconned out. Please correct yeah. me or correct the person. Yeah. Um, I remember that Glitter Boys, before it could fire its boom gun, had to put these pylons into the ground to yes. stay stabilized. Somebody That's said that was retconned it out. Well. Is it? That's rec- it's out. They don't have don't to. Know. They don't have to stabilize it anymore. I, I thought they did, but uh, again, this isn't my. Let's see if we can find. I, it. I was talking about it a few weeks ago, and somebody said that was retconned out. You don't need those anymore. Oh, I thought you did. Well, we will see when it yeah. comes up to the boom gun. So it's gonna, it's gonna be in here. And they said, "Holy crap!" They're like pages of. I know. I'm not, I'm not going through all that. We have, we got time. <laughs> but that's that's awesome. No, that's a good thing. Like, there's yeah, a is. lot of lore, a lot of background helps you understand why this is different than just being a robot pilot. Yes, I mean you can be a robot pilot if you want, but if you're if you're a glitter boy pilot, you have cred. And all that, all those paragraphs are why. Now, if we move on to the glitter boy stats uh, alignment, any, but. If you are a Glitter Boy pilot, you were gifted this armor either by your family member or or a mentor or someone who believed that you deserved it. And if that's true, you're usually principled, scrupulous, or unprincipled, one of the, you know, good alignments. At worst, you're anarchist. But usually you're one of the good alignments. And you need a physical prowess of 10 or higher. That's it. You just have to be able to pilot it and not fall down. It's <laughs> basically all. Racial requirements. None. You just have to fit. I mean, you have to fit inside the armor, so you have to be human size. You could be an elf. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Uh, really tall dwarf, I guess. Could probably do it, too. <laughs> uh, NBA dwarf, maybe. I can't reach the pedals. And uh, as a Glitter Boy, you get the following bonuses right off the bat. Glitter Boy is descended from generations of Glitter Boy This is a legacy Glitter Boy. Yep. If you were chosen. Not if you just found the armor. Like, oh, I found it in the street. No, you found if you were chosen. <laughs> Glitter boy get, armor in the street. Yeah. You get a plus one initiative, plus one strike, plus two pull punch, plus three savers horror factor, plus 20 SDC, a plus one additional attack action when using a Glitter Boy. These bonuses apply only to those with a long family tradition of piloting the Glitter Boy, not those who have recently acquired one. And you what's the most been... important attribute there or, or stat that's bumped up? Initiative. Plus one. Oh, I'd say plus one attack. Additional attack while using a Glitter Boy, that, that works too. But uh, initiative bonuses are hard to come by. Yeah, true, true. They are hard to come by, so they're like gold. OCC skills, these are all the skills you get as a Glitter Boy pilot. Uh, language, language other. Notice there's no, uh, is there reading? There's no literacy there. He's just, okay, you're, you're illiterate. Uh, basic electronics and basic mechanics. Like I said, you are part mechanic. You have to, it's your job to keep this thing running. And I don't know. I don't know if you've if you've tried to restore a car from the '40s or '50s or whatever. They don't make those parts anymore. You got to get creative sometimes. General repair and maintenance, land navigation, pilot robot armor, power armor, pilot combat, uh, elite robot armor, pilot combat basic, pilot one of any choice. That's like doom buggy, motorcycle, automobile, plane, jet, whatever. Uh, radio basic, read sensor equipment, weapon systems, and three weapon proficiencies. All of them for uh, energy weapons and hand-to-hand basic you can change it up to hand an expert for occ related skills which we're going to see right here select seven other skills at level that's one. not a lot that is Glitter not boys lot, are very supremely focused in what they do it's true and you have these skill sections to choose from any in communications none from cowboy there's cowboy God damn. yeah 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 there's a, there is a cowboy feel I'm guessing they brought over the new West stuff into yeah, here. I don't know, but the, but there is category. actually yes, a category called cowboy. That's awful. Domestic any <laughs> hate. Everyone's got to learn how to cook, right? You don't want to poison yourself. Electrical none. Espionage. Detect ambush. Detect concealment only. Horsemanship none. You. Why would you? You're a glitter boy. Come on. Automotive mechanic only. So I guess you know which what uh, what pilot to take. You pilot automobile because anything else you're not going to be able to you know maintain. First aid paramedic, you know, blah, 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 all this stuff. Any weapon proficiency, any technical, plus 5% to, to uh, certain skills in the technical area. And then you have secondary skills, two secondary skills. These are skills from the uh, the skill list, from the OCC-related skill list as well, but two other ones, but they get no bonuses at all. Standard equipment, Glitter Boy Power Armor, complete with boom gun. We're going to look at the boom gun in a minute. 
and a full payload. You start off with a full full clips for for all your weapons. I'm and, glad it uh, says it because I've been in a couple cruiser. of games where the glitter boy was told, "Well, you have to find ammo though, because I don't want you to start with the boom gun." Like, no, okay, that's, that's the whole beautiful. point of being yeah. a glitter boy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, those uh, you get all the stuff. Uh, environmental body armor, usually light environmental body armor, because you know you're in a you're in a glitter boy. Shut up. <laughs> energy rifle sidearm choice four extra eclipse for each uh, one non-energy weapon i recommend a knife two grenades two smoke grenades six signal flare survival oh another survival mark. utility belt i have batman air filter gas mask walkie talkie two okay all kinds of stuff money 46 times 100 credits and 1d4 times 1000 in black market items everyone starts off with no almost everyone starts off with black market items and it's up to the game master whether you can turn them in now or have to find a fence or whatever. And it's always hard. Just give me the money. Just give me the money. <laughs> <laughs> don't be a, don't be a dick about Good, it. Because not only is it a random roll and what it's worth, but then you have to deal with the game master. And be like, hmm, I'll give you sixty percent of that. <laughs> you know? What? No, stop it. Uh, All right. And if you go with the good boy power armor, well, before you go there, I do want to point out. Related OCCs, right? And he actually says the best variants of the Glitter Boy OCC can be found in Rift's World Book Japan because those are time traveling. Yes, yeah, somebody's going to yell at me for that. I don't care. I'm saying it that way anyway. They are time traveling Glitter Boys and Rift's World Book 23 Free Quebec, which has just got all the insane Glitter Boys. Yeah. Th those are the, because uh, in Canada, they have, they secretly have the, I think, I believe they secretly have the ability to keep to manufacture Glitter Boys and they've manufactured a whole bunch of variants. Oh, the nerdy oak. Actually, do you want to go through some? No, we're not done. When we're done with Glitter Boy, we'll go through some of these yeah, comments. We're done. Okay, the first thing about Glitter Boy is right off the bat, it says, Unknown to the heroes of Rift's Earth, the Glitter Boy environmental suit was first fully field operational power armor to be deployed by the U.S. military and was key unit in the multinational peacekeeping organization known as NEMA, Northern Eagle Military Alliance, and misidentified by Dark Age Legends as Neemans. Because people are dumb. NEMA's members nation, USA, Canada, Mexico. The armor's original name was the Chromium Guardsman, but that name is long forgotten and remembered by the snappier nickname Glitter Boy because they because they glitter because of their coating. Their anti-laser coating makes them glitter. Uh, sea Chaos Earth traces back all the way, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, they're small. They're mobile. One-person armored robot vehicle. The robot suit stands approximately 10 feet tall and offers fully articulated hands and mobility of the human body. It's not super fast, not made for that, but it's made to, you know, get around by walking. Uh, da -da -da. Robotic frame is nearly indestructible, resilient. Well, nearly indestructible in, in Rift's Earth doesn't really mean much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I mean, come on. Really? All right. Uh, it's so it indestructible that it has four or 700 uh, whatever uh, MDC. 770 main body <laughs> MDC. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, really it's, it's not bad. It's good. But uh, the robotic frame, and it's also made to to keep you in there for long periods of time. It was made to be comfortable. It was made to seat you in a way where uh, muscle fatigue and uh, uh, stiffness and, and stuff like that is, is negated as much as possible. So you, a person can stay in there for 24 hours at a time. But after that, they have to, you know, get out and stretch. You know, you can't stay in the armor forever. You got to get out. You got to stretch. You got to, you know, do some calisthenics and stuff like that. Get, get the blood flowing. Because, uh, you know, sure, it's super comfortable and made for long periods, but not, not that long. How do they eat? I mean, I'm sure there's a little chest or something that you can carry some snacks in. But, I mean, yeah. if you're in there, it says three weeks here. If you're in there for three weeks, how do you eat? Does it got a big Glitter Boy straw or something? I mean, it could. It could. It very well could. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it says here, the former coalition state of free Quebec is the only kingdom in North America that manufactures and deploys Glitter Boy as part of its army and national defenses. In fact, free Quebec deploys and maintains the largest contingent of Glitter Boys in the world, a scheme that helped out, helped put a quick end to the coalition's plan to invade and conquer free Quebec when it proclaimed its independence and seceded from the coalition. This is all, see, that that another reason why I didn't want to do the Rift's ultimate book is because a lot of the, a lot of the supplemental books and world books have already happened. I, I got you. It pisses me off. But let's let's instead of spoiling all that, let's go to the glitter boy power arm itself. Seven hundred and seventy main body. That is for yes. e even for robot armor. That is huge. And lasers do half damage. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Speed sixty miles per hour. It's not slow, but 
there are I mean, a lot but of for a vehicle for a vehicle it's not fast for a vehicle it's not fast uh it can leap 12 feet high or uh the, the 10 feet with a running start jet thruster assisted leaps hurl the power armor 80 feet across if necessary the thrusters can momentarily hold the g10 aloft as high as 12 feet off the ground but only for less than a minute okay underwater capabilities swimming please doesn't swim it has thrusters that can move it underwater but it's garbage it's not meant for that I can it water the splish, splish, splish. power system nuclear energy average energy life is 25 years now Great. what am think, i supposed no, to do years, after that forever. yeah 25 years that's forever it is now but remember you're you're in a you're in a legacy vehicle that was manufactured over 300 years ago this thing has been, re- the nuclear engine has been replaced several times. <laughs> so you might have to replace yours as well. Yours could only have an extra year on it. One year of life left in your engine, you have to find a new one. So get ready for that. Can we live in Quebec, please? Sorry, what? Can we live in Quebec? Uh, I need no. to, I, I, oh, but I'm not playing a glitter boy. <laughs> no, you don't want, yeah, it's not, it's not fun. But uh, Quebec is wrong for many reasons. One, it's Canada. <laughs> and uh, two, uh, Qu- uh, Quebec is like worse Canada than regular Canada. Because well, Mr. Mr. Max Boivin, who's <laughs> might be in our chat right now. They're, they're Canadians who hate themselves. He said, I want to be in France. I want to secede and become French. You want to become a worse country than you already are? Why? Why? Stupid. All right. Uh, yes. The RG-14 Rapid Acceleration Electromagnetic Rail Gun. Bam, that's that is a big mouth of a boom gun. It shoots out flechette style rounds at the speed of Mach 5 and actually creates a sonic boom. Flechette, that means it's uh, hundreds and hundreds of small needles shot out at five times the speed of sound. It's shooting trash at you. Yeah. And it hurts bad. 3d6 times 10 mega damage per shot. Uh, Where's, oh, there it is. For for single shot stuff, I mean the only thing the only thing better is, is actual artillery platforms. That means the Non-mobile. average hit, yeah, average shot sure. is hundred and ten mega damage. It, now, if if a person, a guy in average in average MDC body armor gets hit by this, they die. They just die because the average body armor is between seventy five and hundred MDC. Hundreds on the on the high side, so they get hit by a boom gun, they just die, they just turn to salsa, and that's it. Uh, the power armor suit is specifically insulated from shockwaves of its own boom gun because it creates a sonic boom. Characters without any type of sound or ear protection will be temporarily deafened for two d four minutes and are minus eight on initiative and minus three to parry and dodge. Characters who are inside environmental body armor, light MD vehicle, or power armor will have some protection, but are still temporarily deafened for 1d4 minutes. Minutes. Same penalty apply, but for short. Yeah, minutes. Minutes. Not Each actions boom, or rounds. <laughs> no, minutes. So if you are in medium or heavy body armor or a medium, a medium armored vehicle, you're fine. Anything less than that, you're in trouble. Rate of fire. Each booming blast counts as one action. How many actions do you have? Say five. Well, you get plus boom. one if you're legacy. <laughs> That's true. Boom, 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 boom. It's like an automatic shotgun. It's scary as hell and it kills everything around it. Range, 11,000 feet. That's two miles. Two mile range. If you can see it, you can hit it and you can kill it. Payload, 1,000 rounds in an auto feed ammo canister. 1,000 shots. absolutely just dis- do you do you understand killer. why some people think that this is an op class i don't it think is. it is because it has inherent weaknesses that uh, a lot of bad gms don't like to exploit but uh, just off the cuff standing toe to toe in a fight this is dang your op yeah it is uh it takes 15 minutes to reload 40 rounds but you know if if the fight you're in exhausts all 1000 of your shots you were going to lose anyway you were gonna lose anyway if you if you fire the boom gun a thousand times and still haven't won the battle you're fighting eh, 
It was never in the cards for you. I'm sorry. There are alter alternative weapons. Uh, large, heavy rail guns, modified to have their trigger guard removed or the trigger guard enlarged. Uh, plasma weapons. Uh, you know, all, all kinds of stuff that, that is modified. Uh, boom gun replacement. There, there are, there are some, there are some weapons in this book even that connect power to the Glitter Boy armor itself. So it runs off of it, off of the Glitter Boy's nuclear, you know, battery or uh, nuclear uh, fusion type thing. So it has basically unlimited ammo for laser or, or plasma or whatever. So those are, those are some of the variants you can have if you don't have a boom gun, which is entirely possible. The GM could say, yes, you can be a Glitter Boy legacy, but the boom gun was destroyed a hundred years ago. And you haven't been able to find a replacement. I'm not playing it then. Okay. You can not play it if you want. But, you know, the, the replacement would be this, this energy weapon that does less damage but has unlimited ammo. Uh, I, 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 could, I could take it. I could take it. And if I you go down the next page, you get to see the, uh, the, the boom gun. How With it the looks. pylons. Sticking into the ground. And there are still pylons there. Yep. You see the pylons? They have to... They have to go into the ground that plus uh stabilizing thrusters counteract the insane kickback of the boom gun to make sure that the glitter boy stays upright when firing it now i haven't i haven't uh seen anywhere in here where it says it's not and since i'm looking at a picture of the the anti-sway pylons i'm gonna say it's not reconned out because it's right there I've got a comment on that that starred. Okay. Then we move to, what is that? Hand-to-hand -hand combat, elite Glitter Boy. This is specifically Glitter Boy robot combat. It will not work in any other armor. You do not get these bonuses. Plus two initiative, plus two to strike when shooting the boom gun or other rail cannons. Uh, plus two to strike hand-to-hand -hand combat. Parry, dodge, disarm, pull punch, all that. Why would anyone pull punch? I don't get that. Uh, special systems, optical systems, advanced laser targeting, self-destruct. You can self-destruct like a Gundam. That's fine. Uh, laser resistant armor. All glitter boys are made from special alloys with a chrome looking surface. A resistance to laser attack does half damage, like I said. Other features, all standard environmental power armor features, plus built-in language translator and depth gauge. So if, if you have language, a language on file, it will automatically translate to and from. So when you're speaking out the speaker of your Glitter Boy armor, you can speak French if you want to be dumb, or you can speak Spanish or German or whatever and understand it as long as it's in the in the uh, computer system. Can you read this designer's note? Or I can read it if you want, because I love it. Go ahead. <clears throat> designer's note to Game Masters. At some point, someone somewhere in game design land must have decreed, all characters must be equal. And a bunch of game companies jumped on the bandwagon to even out the power level of every character. How tragic. That's like expecting every opponent in a video game to offer the same level of difficulty. Talk about boring. Of course, there has to be game balance, but complete equality for all characters? Never! Every character in Rifts... Rifts, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Every character in Rifts is deliberately designed to have unique abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. Those unique abilities may be awesome and powerful under one set of circumstances, like the Glitter Boy shooting things with a boom gun, or environment, and a liability under another, I don't know, high-speed engagement? Yeah. Or, or you know, ha to having to leave it yep. unattended at some time, it can easily be stolen. That emulates real life and in game terms is deliberately designed to encourage creativity. That's right, you're not being a dick GM by being creative ingenuity and role playing unless you constantly do it gotta have seven guards or bruce Lombardo for five to thank you for the five dollars bruce this is the best designers note to game masters in the history of ever yeah. <laughs> thank you for the five bucks sir no i agree Not that's why fair. i read this when i was making my glitter boy character for our folio a few weeks ago yep. and i was like yes oh my god yes thank you kevin thank you and if it wasn't you if it was somebody else ever i don't care Thank you for letting it be in your book. <laughs> anyway, the Griff's game has been carefully play tested, and there is most definitely balance between the vast array of characters. However, big bold capitalized, the GM, and depending on the circumstances, the players must exploit those strengths and weaknesses for the balance to work. 
The Glitter Boy is a great example of this. I can't tell you how many times I've heard a Rifts gamer say, Glitter Boys are too powerful. I banned them from my game. Or Glitter Boys rock. They destroy everything. Roar. Yep. Yeah. I've heard they're other players. Right. What's that? They're, and they're both right. It, right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yet I've heard other players say that in an almost equal number of times, Glitter Boys are too slow and vulnerable. They die too easy. I don't see why anybody thinks they're so tough. At first well, glance, you might think one of these comments must be wrong. They can't no, both be correct, correct, but they are both correct. Yeah. All of them. De depending, and this is a great point right here, depending on the circumstance, the type of combat, the cleverness of the players, and the sophistication of the GM. Glitter yeah. boys can be devastatingly powerful or pathetically vulnerable. Yes. yes, they are a powerhouse character. They are supposed to be, but they also have their weaknesses and i'm not going to read any more but it goes well, yeah, and it talks it, about it, strengths and weaknesses here, here's the easiest thing that, that that people do wrong to get glitter boys killed think of glitter boy as a tank think of it as a tank no one no no military sends out tanks alone that's that's when you get tanks killed a, a tank is part of a team to to defend it so it can shoot out massive amounts of damage to, to enemy, enemy units. A tank by itself is going to get surrounded and murdered. Has to have a support crew. So if you're, if you have and a bunch of there's a flip side to that. Infantry is covered by the tank. That, that support yes. crew is covered cover by the tank. Other. Yeah, yep. exactly. They, they cover each other. Now, that is our example of a men-at-arms. Now we're going to go an example of adventurer or, or scholar. And, and I think, I'm and I'm glad you're doing this no because I... Takes. I, I, I'm glad you're doing this because I think that all of these character classes in the support area are overlooked. Yes, they are. This is this one you're going to want, but first we're going to look at we're going to look at chat before I say which oh, yeah, one yeah, it is. We're yeah. going to look at chat. That's good. It's good to do that. All right, here we go. Why don't you have an RPG gate poster? I don't know. That's a good idea. Actually, I kind of do. A, I kind of really do. But you know what? I think I'll, I'll design one directly as a poster. I think that's a good idea. It's a good idea, Kevin. Thank you. Um, for those that want details outside the core book, Free Quebec and the NGR bought, oh, I think both manufactured oh, glitter boys. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Including new versions. So. And also uh, um, the uh, Japan World book has glitter boys as well. By the way, those who want to correct every word we say, this is how you write it up. This is a good correction. This is a good update. This, this, this expands what we're telling everybody. Yep. Oops, I didn't need that. Um, the pitons the, uh, pitons in, uh, in savage is yeah okay yeah iron savage got it okay um okay. but then there's this newer alternative versions of the glitter boy do not have to plant itself to fire weapons many versions do not have the boom gun but that if the it boom doesn't gun. have the boom gun then you don't need you don't need the the uh, anti-sway system understandable yeah never stood where the boom gun had recoil railgun doesn't have recoil doesn't mm. I thought anything, anytime a projectile goes this way, some force has to go back that well, way. You know, to be fair, uh, an electromagnetic railgun wouldn't have anywhere near as, as much recoil as you'd think, but but it still would have some. And accelerating something to Mach 5 in the span of like 10 feet is going to cause a, you to have some some kind of way about this, okay? It's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause a problem. And the the anti-sway mechanism is the solution also physics aside it's cinematic yeah like uh, yeah i'll just leave it there it's cinematic okay hey, hey now, two things uh once okay certain models of glitter boy don't need the spikes we are okay we discussed that and who do you think would win in a fight glitter boy or a gladiator from robotech you see, he's talking about the gladiator destroyed the archer. Yeah, yeah, the the, the destroyed. Um, the the glitter boy because uh, Rips mech have more MDC than Robotech mech on average, and uh, the, the gladiator can pull out some major damage. Can bust out some real damage. Uh, where are the destroids in this book? Uh, are there no mine? destroids? Okay, here we go. There's Excalibur. Gladiator, Mark Two, so the, or Mark Three. This is like I guess the most upgraded one in all the Palladium games. So MDC for its main body is three hundred. 
<laughs> yeah, it's not. Okay, it's no, not no. okay, that that's bad. That means the average. It can take three hits of average rolls from a boom yeah. gun before it blows up. But what about its damage output? If it has like an average of five hundred MDC damage output, then it might win. Well, it has one, two, three, four, four weapon systems. Missiles, mini missile, so multi missile, mini missile, rapid fire laser, and high power GRA 10 laser cannon. So, the laser cannon itself is uh, 3d6 per individual blast. Nope, that's halved against Glitter Boy, so that's not good. Yep. Uh, rapid fire laser turret is, nope, where the hell half. is it? Uh, D4 times 10. Well, it's half. got modifiers in here where you could actually get it up to 2d4 times 10, but uh, just doing the basics. Uh, the then we got the, the mini missiles. Which just says payload. I have to look up the mini missiles. I, I'm not on that page, and I'm not going to go there. And then the multi missiles can fire two, four, eight, and I don't remember what the damage for those missiles are. I know it's in the book, but anyway, okay. I, I'm I'm going to put my money in the glitter boy. Yeah, you, yeah, it's it's best to put your money in the glitter boy. Sure, yeah, the the missiles can can have a devastating effect, but you don't have a thousand missiles in that thing. So violence sells everything. Says one d six times ten average for mini missiles. Okay. So it's gonna it's gonna put out some hurting, but it's yeah, not it's gonna it's not gonna hurt. But seven hundred and seventy MDC against two hundred and fifty MDC. Hmm. Right. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the glitter boy. Next. Like the idiot GM who, who said I could be a glitter boy pilot, but couldn't start with a glitter boy robot. That's that's what? dumb. Next. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right. Um, Legion Myth, I dislike when core book references splat books. The core book should be good enough to stand on its own. Understand this I book was and it's the same thing that, that he's been talking about too, where he would rather have covered, you know, the, the first book or the 30th version. year, uh, uh, 94, 94, 91, early 90s version, whatever, whenever it came out. Yes, I, I understand that, but this is the book that sold now. And this book does follow an upgraded timeline. It'd be like if I'm covering, I know it's a different edition, but just for the sake of argument, it'd be like if I'm covering fourth edition Earth Done versus first edition Earth Done, it actually moves the timeline forward. It's going to have some things in there that the earlier edition didn't have. Um, but see, yeah, I get it. But it, it, I kind of like the fact that it referenced it myself. Not, not that I think it should. I just kind of like the facts like, hey, here's the book. If you want more, use those other ones. I just wish it would say you don't have to though, because apparently that's something that you have to say, kind of like his disclaimer that he had a moment ago. It feels like something you have to say to players and gamers now. You don't have to incorporate everything that's been written though. You could just use the core book as you know on its own. Yep. I don't know why you have right. to say that nowadays, but uh, can you speak French, Max? Not Max, not fluently, but yes. Um, I, I can actually understand it better than I can speak it. Uh, speak enemy language. Ugh. Look, in when I went to uh, uh, junior high, because that's where we started foreign languages, um, we had Spanish, which I, that I know, uh, French and German. And I thought German was going to be too hard. So that's why I went with French. No, German, I, German it wasn't hard. I, well, I know that now. I didn't know that as an eighth grader. I wish I would have taken I German. I had the same choices. And French and Spanish for the same reasons. I mean, French is just a, 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 a an enemy language. And uh, Spanish is a dirt language. So uh, I chose German. You I know, wish I would have chosen. But you know what? My junior year of high school, I chose, I chose Russian. So there, there we go. So I made up for the French, right? And lastly, here's the last one. Uh, oh, crap. I highlighted the wrong one. He said that there's some sort of MD, uh, uh, SDC hit point impact rule if you're hit by an MDC weapon, even if you're wearing body armor. That's off oh, the Oh, yeah, door. yeah. There, there is a, there is a, a kind of like a TBI rule in this in this thing where you you you're sure you took no damage but the explosion was enough to knock you off your feet it's enough to rattle your brain and you still take sdc damage a little bit because you're rattle around in, inside your inside your suit or inside the vehicle or whatever see and if you remember that i don't know where it is in this book well maybe when Any we follow it we la la. that's right oh no no eep dirkle borkle what the, uh, the rick and morty reference oh wow okay okay Right, I think I said on. that right. I don't know. Yeah, well, what page was I going to? 91. Your... 91. 91. We're going to look at the operator. Here we go. And why does nobody take this one? We'll find out. We'll read it. The operator is a super mechanic and repairman. There you go. That's all people need to read and go next. 
but it's super important, especially if you have I don't a glitter know, boy, a glitter boy, <laughs> or an armored vehicle, or some kind of transport for your entire gang, and you don't want to burn your all of your related and secondary skills on on maintaining this thing. Remember, a glitter boy can only only maintain a glitter boy and a car, and that's it. Those th those are the those are the mechanic skills he can take. So if you're in anything else or have any other kind of vehicle or any other kind of power armor, you're going to need an operator to, to take care of it. There's also so, one other thing that people forget that the operator can do for your group. What's that? Make you money. Yes. Yes. If you need money, you go into a big town and you say, hey, re repair shops open. And you can, you, can, uh, you can repair other people's stuff for money. A mechanical and electrical whiz kid who can fix just about anything that has gears and wires. As such, they are always a welcome sight in any community and are treated with respect and admiration. That does not happen. Here, here's the thing. What a lot of people don't understand about riffs is that when you walk into a town, if you walk in with your glitter boy, if you walk in with your, with your full MDC environmental armor, people are going to think you're there to kill them. Right? They're going to treat you badly. Imagine walking into Walmart in full Marine Corps battle rattle. I mean, Walmart's probably a bad, a bad example because lots of people walk into Walmart wearing all kinds of weird shit. So you may not even get noticed. Yeah, but uh, yeah, what walk walk into a, a high end uh, high end department store where you know with the with it with an M sixty and uh, and full 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 uh, combat body armor. Uh, people are going to feel ways about things about you and uh, the cops are going to come. So uh, don't do it. But if you're an operator, you walk into a town. Hey, operators in town, like, oh my God, this is great. Our generator has been down for two weeks. We haven't seen anyone come by in a month. Oh my God, we got the spare parts, but we don't know how to use it. Can you help us? Oh, sure. And then you have the, the debt and gratitude of an entire town just by appearing. It's great. All right, so let's see. Uh, what are their special abilities? On the next page, we can see special abilities. None of these abilities apply to bionics or cybernetics. You have to be a body fixer to get those, those bonuses. And there's a minus 20% skill penalty when working on robots and power armor, unless you have the robot mechanics and electronic skills. Oh, which that's if you cool. Don't take, yeah, if you don't take it, why, why, why are you going to be an operator? In Palladium, this penalty is usually across the board. Hmm. Unless you're a particular class that is meant for robotics. So but if cool. you get the power armor repair skills, then it doesn't count. Jury rig repairs. You can slap together solid temporary repairs in half the time that lasts twice as long. The, the jury rig skill allows you to MacGyver a solution to a problem and have it work for a while. It's going to break again, but it's going to work now. It's your donut tire that you just put on to get to the, to well, the, the mechanic. That, I mean, it's a... It's the whole, uh, there's one, one episode of MacGyver where some, someone shot a hole in, in his, in his car's radiator and he cracked a couple eggs in it and the egg cooked itself and plugged the hole from the inside. Then he was able to fill, fill it with water. Something like that. I don't think it would work in real life, but it, it worked in <laughs> MacGyver land, but something like that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a jury rig solution. It'll work for a little while. Your jury rig solutions will take half as long to implement and work twice as long afterward. That's great. Yeah. Find parts and components. You're a scavenger. You know what to look for. When, when, when you find wreckage, everyone else sees garbage. You see gold. Uh, recognize machine quality. This is important, especially when you when you're buying new machines, get getting your power armor repaired, stuff like that. You want operator around to be able to tell you is he screwing me over or not? Is this going to work? Repair and soup up machines. This is this is the big one. Repairs for cheap. Replace MDC. Add MDC. You have a 70, 770 mega damage alloy glitter boy. Not anymore. Brand new vehicles and body armor. Blah, 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 blah. The percentage increase depending on the operator's skill level and experience. Plus 5% at levels 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. And there are always these limits. Even as like a Borg or something, if you want to slap more armor on or increase your, your armor threshold, there's a limit because you usually have to buy it in money. But then it's like, okay, at this point, you're Wait. done. 
Yeah. Yeah. It, it gets bulk and weight at, you know, and then it's done. But uh, the operator gets around this, these artificial maximum by saying, oh, well, I can just, you know, uh, make the alloy in a different way to make it thinner, lighter, faster, stronger, whatever. But it's still limited by this 5%. You know, yes, each you know, multi by his level. Yeah. Which is fine. I, I like that. I like the fact that he can increase more, but you know, you can't just go out there. I'm now glitter boy, a 7,000 MDC. Yeah, yeah, nothing like no. that. No, no, nothing like that. And then maximize performance can tweak a vehicle or most any machine to perform better. Increase speed by 20%. That's huge range of weapons by 10%, reduce the weight of a vehicle by 10% and add one extra weapon or feature per body area of a vehicle or standing fortification. That's awesome. That is huge. That is huge. You know, my tank is 20% faster than your tank. You win. But you one win. extra weapon or feature, because again, I use the Borg example because I just know it well. I can only fit in like three arm items or something. I, I forget the exact number, right? It doesn't matter. Now I can have four. Yep. That's another sensor. That's another gun. That's another, you know, whatever it happens to be, chest, shoulders, whatever. The fact, and that's in each location. Hey, uh, hey body fix you. I'm going to lay down here. You do what you got to do. Yeah, <sighs> just, just. Just don't tickle me. We're fine. All right. And OCC bonuses. One of the only OCCs that give you a plus to IQ. Plus one to IQ. You're well read. Yeah. Plus two to physical strength. Plus one to physical prowess. Uh, plus two to perception rolls. Plus two to save versus fatigue and disease. That's and interesting. Two, two to, that is weird. And plus to SDC. I mean, the disease one I can maybe see uh, just because, you know, you kind of understand where diseases live and, you know, so forth. Like you, you understand what tetanus is, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the fatigue one, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. And optional, Psy Operator. This is, this is optional. You don't have to be psychic, but if you want to try, you can. It has recently come to light that some operators have developed a degree of psychic power. Approximately 15 to 20% are psychic. Note that all Psy operators are considered major psy psychics. Pick three abilities from the following plus one additional ability at levels four, eight, and 12. Reduce the number of available OCC related oh, skills hell by no. half. Keep your psychic. I want the skills. Yeah, I'd, I'd want the skills too. But, you know, uh, do they have the good one here? Telemechanics. Yeah, they have yeah, telemechanics. But telemechanics, unless, well, I'm sure it's different, but if it's similar to what's in After the Bomb, it wasn't worth it. In this one, uh, you can touch any machine and know exactly how to operate, how to fix it, how to power it, exactly everything about it. And for a, for a repairman, that's huge. Mm -hmm. That is huge. I thought that was read right, equipment, so, but I could be wrong. OCC stats. You need an IQ of nine or higher. That's it. That's not hard. Well, because you, you'll have a 10 hard. afterward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have at least a nine, you'll at least have a 10. Uh, ratio requirements, none. You, anyone can be an operator. doesn't matter. And these are your skills. Native language at 92%. One other language, plus 20. Basic math, computer operation, no kidding, electrical engineer, computer repair, fine contraband. There's the jury rig skill. Mechanical engineer, pilot, three three of choice, radio base, extensive equipment, weapons engineer, weapon proficiency blunt, probably a spanner of some kind. Or a, or a hammer, yeah. <laughs> or a hammer. And weapon proficiency modern. And you get hand-to-hand -hand basic, which can be increased to expert or martial arts by burning the OCC related skills and OC related electrical, any mechanical, any, and you get plus 10%. That means right now you would get robot, robot power armor repair. And you're now not at the minus 20% to you to, to repair robots. That is an easy take. It is an easy get. You want that skill, get it military, any plus 5% or plus 10% for field armor and military fortification. Physical, any except acrobatics, gymnastics, or wrestling. You take boxing. Pilot, any, plus 10%. Pilot related, any, plus 10%. Why would you want to burn away these skills by, by being some dirty little psychic? No, you want these skills. These skills are awesome. <laughs> Every one of these skills is useful for the entire group. And you get four secondary skills. Oh, I would have thought it would have been more than four, but okay. Standard equipment. Is your standard equipment, flashlight, electrical tape, repair kits, stuff like that. Money, 44 times a thousand. 
and uh, the wandering operator will have 5d6 times 100 and 3d4 times 1000 in black God, more black market crap. I hate that. Everyone gets black. Like, I already told you about that. Cybernetics, none to start, but you can get sci you can get cybernetics if you want. It's fine. If you are a psi operator, though, remember cybernetics and uh, and bionics will lessen your ISP, and it will make psionics harder. Just fair warning. All right, that is the operator. Very, very overlooked class. Very, very useful to any group, especially a group that has any kind of uh, uh, weapon vehicles or uh, APCs, stuff like that. Any kind of uh, power armor or robot, you want an operator with you. All right, we're going to look at a chat now. Do we have any chat started? Uh, I have one. That's it. Um, I, I, what I wanted to do first is I wanted to go back to here and just kind of look over these classes, uh, real quickly, not, not going into them in any form like you did. Uh, obviously the men at arms, those are your combat classes, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, so you have a cyborg crazy, uh, it's just a nut job who has his, uh, attributes increased by, well, you know, poking needles into the brain. Not just a nut job. Now, to be fair, yes, he's a he's a nut job <laughs> you have bionic implants in your brain stimulating your body to work at beyond normal fashion and this is great you're basically immune to pain immune to fatigue you're faster stronger better not at the level of a juicer but as you go up in level the brain being stimulated this way goes through let's just say deficits <laughs> so you will get neuroses along the way the higher level you are the more brain damage you get that's why they're called crazy they don't start that way they get that way so they start with one don't they i thought they started with one at level one you're fine I, oh, I okay for some at, reason at for some reason i thought it started with one but you might be right uh you know more than i do about this stuff so um cyber knight is kind of like your uh, your space paladin yeah glitter boy we talked about headhunter this is one i've always struggled with i'm like why would you want to be a headhunter and not just a combat cyborg i mean i get it as in let's say you're playing a character you were a glitter boy you were a merc soldier whatever and along the way you got more and more cybernetics because your arms got blown off or something that i get but why would i start as a headhunter explain that to me okay as a as a cyborg of a full conversion cyborg there's lots of places you can't go we don't we don't cater to your kind here there is, you know, uh, a stigma to just having your brain in, in, a, in the chest of a robot. All right. But a headhunter, he is he's a mercenary soldier with an arm and a leg replaced with, with, you know, weapons or sensors or whatever in there that helps him be what he wants to be. And usually a headhunter is someone who takes bounties on other people, um, you know, hunts people, brings them in for you know, money. That's what they do. That's, that's what they do. And, uh, being, being a partial cyborg helps them do that, but allows them to go to the bar, allows them to lay with a woman, allows them to do all these things <laughs> like a real person. See, it takes a lot to be a full conversion cyborg. It takes a lot to be a juicer. You got to have the right headspace. You're like, I will never be the same again. I am going to put my brain in a robot body I will never. I will agree with you on that life. one. The juicer thing. A lot of people were turned into juicers against their will. Okay. I shouldn't say a lot, but some were turned no. into juicers against their will, and some were, were become combat cyborgs against their will too. I mean, it happens. Okay. But this is this is you know this is the outlier. We're talking about you have to be in a really different headspace to choose to be a juicer or choose to be a cyborg. The shit that does not come back from you don't come back from that. But as a headhunter. You're still human, but you have some robot parts to give you an edge. So I understand why someone would want to be a headhunter instead of just a regular merc or mm. instead of a full combat cyborg or a juicer or crazy, because there's no coming back from those other things. No, I agree back. with what you're saying, and I know what chat's saying as well. I start a couple more, but uh, I'm still not sold. I'd just say go merc soldier then. But that's that's just my mentality. You're, on you're that. a merc soldier with benefits, with bonuses, basically. So adventurers and scholars. Now, get rid of this word. <laughs> that turns it off to me right there. Uh, I, I, I get the kids out of the game. Uh, yeah. Outside of that, um, explain to me uh, just real quickly. I don't see a lot of these in the games that I'm in. I have well, seen a cyber doc. Mm -hmm. 
I absolutely have seen a rogue sci- uh, one of these. I forget it's a rogue scholar, rogue, rogue scholar scientist. and rogue scientist. Yeah, I think it was rogue scholar that I saw, and people and the wilderness scout. I have not seen people bitch about the vagabond like it's the worst thing to ever be in the game. You talked about the operator. I haven't seen one, and uh, city rat just seems dumb to me. I get okay. the concept of it uh, as far as skills go, but the way it's written up, it just seemed dumb to me. So, so explain in quick version like why people would play each one of these. These are support classes. Mm-hmm. They are not as good in frontline combat as any of the men-at-arms or any of the practitioners of magic. Well, except for the shifter. Shifters are stupid. So initially, people are like, why would I want to play them? Because your, your combat is only 10% of your, of, of your life as, a, as an adventurer in Rifts. The rest of the 90% is other stuff. And the adventurers and scholars shine in the other stuff. Mm-hmm. Getting information, investigation, making nice with the locals. The city rat, the rogue scholar, the vagabond, they're really good at talking to NPCs, negotiating things. Now, now to, be, to be clear about this here, you don't have to have two separate adventures. Well, I guess we're just going to have the support adventure day. No, no, this could all be integrated in. And, you know, the, the Borg or the, or the Juicer don't just have to sit there and be like, oh, my God, when do we get to shoot something? I mean, that's just a bad player. But yeah. you don't have to overdo this stuff, but they're absolutely integral. As you're infiltrating something, as you're moving forward to, say, clearing out a building or exploring a building, you need that scientist with you to actually hack into the ancient computer system to get the information whatever and like he was saying to talk you come across some people you don't necessarily want to blow everybody up because they might be friends of somebody you don't know talk to them yeah and uh look like we said about the operator an operator walks into town people rejoice because all of their (laughs) shit is now about to be fixed uh city rat you go into a city he's in his element he knows exactly where to get things where to sell things where to buy things who to talk to who's who's the top dog who's not just by how they present themselves. This is all free real estate that you lose if you don't have a city rat. Body fixer and cyber doc, I mean, just having them to augment your own people alone is enough. I mean, if you have a, a part, if you have a headhunter in a group and you have a cyber doc in the group as well, that means that the moment you get new cybernetic parts, we can put it in the headhunter right away. Or you want to look uh, look at the quality or repair cybernetic parts? You got a cyber doc. You're good to go. Uh, same, same with the body fixer, the mm-hmm. rogue scholar, and rogue scientist. This is uh, this is kind of niche, a little bit more niche than the others because this is mainly investigation stuff. They're really good at investigating, figuring out. I'm pretty out why sure I've seen are. rogue scholars, not rogue scientists, but I could be wrong. Like I said, that's yeah, fine. Engage. And the, vagabond. The, the, Everybody complains everybody about the complains vagabond. About the vagabond. This is a catch-all. The vagabond is a catch-all. A little bit good at everything. Not great, but good at everything. So if you have one support class in your group, you'd want it to be a vagabond. If you have more than one, then you want it to be something else. But if you have one support character in your group, you want to be a vagabond because he will pick up all of the all of the things that everyone else is dropping. All of the all of the combat people, well, they don't know how to talk to folk. They they don't know how to how to uh, get around in the city. Well, if you want specialty stuff, that'd be city. But if you only have one guy, a vagabond will be able to get the job done. Okay, so that's what adventurers and scholars are. They're support classes. You need at least one of them to be an effective party. But no one wants to bite the bullet and be that secondary class. Stop it. You're going to shine. People are going to love you there. Absolutely. Yes. And that, that's why I wanted Heathen Dog to express that. It, you know, this wasn't necessarily curing my ignorance fully. Although the Vagabond thing is good to note. Uh, it's just, ex- I've run into the same situation as him. Now, he's done riffs a lot more than me, but nobody ever wants to play. Oh, great. So, uh, what? I have 60 MDC armor. I'm going to be dead the first combat. How about don't stand in front of the first combat? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, stand behind the Borg, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> what the hell? We'd say stand behind the juicer, but good luck with that. No, uh, no you, you, the juicer's <laughs> going to move. And you're not going to know it, and then you're going to die. So don't, well, don't The Borg do can run, what is it, 120 miles an hour or something like well, that? yeah, Crazy. but they, they can't move faster than you can blink. Yeah, fair. You're going to know when the Borg is moving. You're not going right. to know when the juicer moves. 
All right, practitioners, practitioners of magic, magic. In, in a quick in a quick in a quick, uh, quick rendition okay. practitioner of magic the the these are these are people who make up for their lack of fighting skills with their supreme magical ability and in the world of rifts it's all mdc here baby so this is all just absolutely destroying now the two you do not take are elemental fusionist and shifter <laughs> those just just go ahead and mark those off mark just scratch them off if you have the book scratch them out just don't do it. Don't don't take him. Dumb. Dumb. But the one that most people take is a uh, Leyland Walker. What's a Leyland Rifter? I've never even heard of that. No, nope, we're not talking about that. That's weird. No, I've, I've literally never heard of it before. I've heard of this yeah, one. Is this, it, is this it's, new? It's new for this book. It's stupid. Oh, okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even, not even going to answer questions about it. Okay. We're, we're just not talking about it. <laughs> Leyland okay. Walker is your general wizard. Your general wizard. Jack of all trade wizard guy. He's not limited in whatever spells he can take. He, he doesn't get as, as many, you know, he doesn't get as many cool superpowers as say the mystic or the techno wizard stuff, but overall he has more utility. He's, he's got, he's got more tools in his toolbox than, than the other classes. And uh, then we have the mystic. This is a mixture of wizard light and psionic light together. So you have magic and psionics in one package. Personally, I say pick a lane, but I understand the appeal. And the techno wizard is someone who can use spells, limited amounts of traditional magic, but where they shine is they merge magic and technology together. Mm -hmm. I like say, techno wizards. Yeah, yeah, techno wizard, right. And uh, what, what they do is say, for example, they, they, they take energy weapon. And instead of running off of Eclipse, which is electricity, they can run it off of ISP or PPE or a crystal or whatever. They, they, they can have it shoot magical fire instead of, instead of regular plasma. They can change it up. So if you, uh, if you're having trouble, you know, uh, like, oh, we, we have a whole lot of uh, magic, magic classes in this game or psychics. Well, ha have one of them be a techno wizard and he'll be able to boost you with uh with all this all this magical technology stuff so you you can you know run it off of magic which you have a plethora of and then we have the psychics burster stupid really? dog boys i love stupid. the burster i know you do psy stalkers dumb mind melter the only one worth taking the only psychic worth being in hold my on. opinion <laughs> hold on uh, let us know in the comments if you agree with uh, with Heathen Dog's take on that one. <laughs> Here's the uh, problem: Bursters, they're 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 too limited. They're they're one trick ponies, and they do that trick really well. They do that trick really well, but that's the only trick they have. It's boring as hell. Dog boys, you're a mutant human slash dog. Stop it. Get help. All right, something's wrong with your brain. Crafty, where are you for that one? <laughs> Psy stalkers. This is this is a a psychic who who's gone like full world of darkness emo. All right. You have to you have to eat. You have no. You know what? No. Stop it. Stop it. You're not you're not a psychic vampire. I want to be a vampire. I want to be. A... Yeah, this, yeah. Shut up. Shut up. You just you go go LARP somewhere. All right. Go LARPing. Get out, get away from my table. And then there's the mind melter, the psychic extraordinaire. If you're gonna play psychic, you might as well go big or go home. And this is definitely big. You get to use super psionics with this guy, and they are no joke. Racial character class. In this book, we have one dragons. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, what one? Well, I mean, let's let's talk a little legitimately on this. What do okay. you say to the people who say that uh, uh, starting off as a dragon is too powerful? I say they're right, but uh, they're all. You're also limiting yourself in many, many ways because a first level dragon can only hold human form for like four, six hours a day. As they get older, as they get more experience, then they can hold their their transformation longer. But you're gonna be walking around as a dragon, and you know what? That scares folk. You can't go into town, you know, you, 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 you can't, uh, you can't cross this checkpoint. They're not going to let you by. You're a dragon. You're dangerous. You're a supernatural creature. People are going to be afraid of you everywhere. Just out of curiosity, what does the coalition think of dragons? Kill on sight. Oh. Talking Just about murder. the coalition. <laughs> yeah. 
Coalition Soldier OCCs. Now, this should be over at the Men in Arms group, but they have it separate just in case you want a coalition campaign. These are your choices. Grunt, Dead Boy, Samus Pilot, Power Armor Pilot, uh, Coalition Military Specialist. This is your intelligence officer, stuff like that. Coalition Technical Officer. This is your uh, coalition operator, basically, but without the psionics. And of course, police, commandos, sailors, and other coalition OCCs are in other world books, stuff like that, which is fine. Absolutely fine. If you, if you want to use those books, that's cool. Uh, and that is... Now, 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 we, now we have chat. Oh, uh, we have chat. Okay. Oh, People you, st you stirred up a hornet's nest, sir. Yep. Actually, I skipped most of that, but uh, here we go. Uh, Operator Rocks. Operator Rocks. Yes, it does. There's a lot of talk about rocks in chat, too. Um, Headhunter equals power armor or robot vehicle to start, right? Uh, do they have one? Do they have one to start? I, I, I don't know about this book about the ultimate book because the the classes are changed a little bit and some classes are added so i don't know if they can start with power armor or robot vehicle go ahead but and put that in the I comments below so. but they might so but this the was thing this is, you have a robot pilot as a men-at-arms class they're the ones who would start with a robot vehicle not a not anyone else and you got so, a glitter boy who starts with a robot vehicle so i don't think so so El said this uh, with regard to me saying, why would you play uh, the headhunter? Look, look, my take, take isn't about min-maxing. I mean, you already have the Merc in there, right? The Merc doesn't compare to the Borg or the Juicer or the Crazy, uh, at least in just standalone, you know, uh, mano a mano. It's not about that. I don't mind getting cybernetics. I don't mind, hey, you got your arm blown off. You, you want to get a cybernetic eyeball or whatever. I just think it's weird. I, it's, it's a hybrid thing for me. I don't, I don't typically like hybrid type stuff like that. Play a Merc, get your bionics later. That, that's the way I see it. I'm not saying that the headhunter is a bad class. I'm just like for my fl flavor, I just play a merc, and then get the get the cybernetics later. That's fair. But it's not about min maxing, because I play a Borg. I mean, you could already say right there. Well, that's kind of min maxing. It's just what I, I don't want to play a crazy or a juicer because I understand the implication of those things. Uh, I mean, juicers are depressing. Knowing that you're gonna die in five or ten years, that's depressing. Uh, I find the idea of offloading the partial Borg to the headhunter to be a good idea. Yeah, because there was the partial conversion Borg yeah. in the original yeah. book, and I do know that. Um, I don't know any player that played a Borg, but only as partial conversion. Right, and that's why I don't know anybody who would play. <laughs> I'm not saying they haven't been done. Y'all are going to be like, oh, my campaign, we got three of them. I get it. I'm just saying, you know, in, in my mentality, I wouldn't do it either. I'd rather play a Merc. If you told me right now I had to play a Merc, I'd be like, okay. Tell me I had to play a, a headhunter. I'd be like, eh. eh. Fine. But that's, yeah, that's me. Uh, rogue scholars and scientists are your treasure hunters. Yeah, like like I said, they're they're mainly for investigation. I mean, if, if you're looking for something or you're you're looking for information or items, or you know, like uh you're 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 going to old Detroit to hunt for pre-rift artifacts, you'd want a rogue scholar or a rogue scientist with you. To help you find and identify these things. But, you know, that's where they shine, pretty much there. And if you're not if you're not a treasure hunting group, then I would move to a different support class. Okay. See, so Riff's version is a Riff's version of Shadow and Decker, Rigor, Cyber, uh, Cyberpunk. So like a Netrunner in Cyberpunk. It's not as bad. It's not as bad. You, you don't have to have the your very own campaign for the no, city you said, it. you said it you said it's a hacker yeah um there are very few riffs tunes that aren't effective if you have the right players and or gm and i think that this is one of the That's reasons why i shy away from this game is because you really do have to have uh, i don't say an open-minded that's not the word uh a very imaginative gm because when you have to start putting together things like glitter boys, dragons, operators, uh, bursters, uh, uh, mind melters all together, and the capabilities that they can and can't do, I don't know. I I, I could I can see somebody being overwhelmed. In fact, this guy down here made a video as to why rifts should be your second game. Yes, not your should first be your game. Second played in game. Yep, best second game ever. No, loves me some Percy. Eh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> My kidney stones. They were talking about rocks. And I oh, just thought okay. this was funny. My kidney stones are MDC, though. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. 
<laughs> I'm sure it feels that way. <laughs> I'm sure it feels that way. Okay, silly that dog boys are under psychics instead of RCC. Kind of true size because stars. They, that are, is true. they are a different race. They yeah. are genetically modified, so they're technically a different race. Yeah. That's right, because size stalkers, those are the ones that are all pale, right? Yeah. Like I said, the, the wannabe vampires just go LARP. <laughs> get, on, get away from my table. This was just good. I, I had to put this in there. Never seen a juicer get to its final form. They usually get some other occupation related illness, like mini missiles mini to the face or the filled, face with or filled with plasma. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I've I've never played a juicer that that made it to the end where he actually dies from being juiced. It's usually violence and death. You know, beforehand. I have met more that have detoxed, and that is supposed to be hard. It is. Yes, I've met more that have detoxed than made it to the end, and that's sad. But to detox, you have to have been a juicer for less than two years. There's a percentage chance you just die and you get minuses for life. Permanent minuses. Do you have any more in character creation? No, that's fine. okay. So one of the things, uh, um, I, I, I saw the comment that was put here. I'm not going to put up on the screen, but um, kind of as a reflex to that. Kevin in the Riffs Ultimate book did a really good job of talking about the crazy and the juicer and even the inherent differences between the two. One of the things that used to happen even in the games that like he ran when we were in the Air Force is people are why the hell would I play a crazy when I could play a juicer? Juicer is going to be the crazy every time. And when you're younger, it's sometimes hard to get through your head what the difference is or why. And I've honestly, I have to be honest about this, I've never seen a juicer played what I would now consider correctly. The crazy, yeah, because it's easy to act like a nut job. But the juicer knows he's going to die. He has committed himself to a death sentence. And I am absolutely, I, I'm so happy that Kevin wrote that into the Riff's Ultimate book. He talks about the crazy. He talks about the juicer. And yes, if you're playing a juicer and you're like, all right, boys, this is great. Hold on. Oh, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if you're playing it right now. I'm not saying that the drugs can't give you that euphoria, but all told, you are playing a death sentence. Yeah, you, you ju just like just like the uh, full conversion cyborg, you have committed yourself to a path that there's no coming back from. That that takes a certain kind of mindset to do that. And you have to role play someone with that mindset. And it's hard. It's no joke. You're, you're going to be a little emo every once in a while. You're going to be a little angsty. You're, you're going to break down every <laughs> once in a while. You, when, when you're in the dark all by yourself, you're going to cry because you've made choices that will end in your death sooner rather than later. Whether it's through the, whether the face full of plasma <laughs> or, <laughs> or just, you know, your brain exploding. Or your heart stopping, or whatever you know, your body will shut down from from overexertion. In a, in a few years, you're going to die. This is a question for you: a, Is a techno wizard a suitable replacement for an operator game? If you have a, a, a more than more than average amount of psychics or spellcasters in your group, a, a techno wizard is an excellent support class for the entire group because you don't have to worry about repairing vehicles you don't have to worry about getting ammo you don't have to worry about all this other stuff uh he can augment armor he can augment weapons he can do all kinds of things that an operator can do but they have to now be powered by ppe or isp and if you don't have enough magical people in your group it's waste it's just it's just for him then so if a true support class you would have two or three magic users or psychic users in your group and then yes definitely the uh the uh, techno wizard was a, is an operator replacement definitely so with absolutely uh, this makes a good point uh mage's music makes a good point here uh with the absolute belief that in a dangerous world you're gonna die young anyway why not go the juice around and enjoy the short time if if you have that uh, fatality uh, that kind of uh, fatalist attitude i had friends like that growing up i'm gonna be dead by the time i'm 30 so i'm gonna live up my life yeah okay and then, I, then their you know, body all messed up, and they, they're, when they're 31, they're like, damn it. In fact, <laughs> I would damn near say that the one guy who was the most prone to saying this was kind of a juicer in real life, because I, I'm surprised he's still alive today with all the drugs he took. So, there you go. Um, 
Yeah. Now, in, in the Rift's world, you're absolutely right. Uh, outside of coalition, uh, you know, safe havens, the average life expectancy is not great for a human, a regular folk, regular folk human. So being a juicer seems like a better deal because you will not live in constant fear anymore. So the time you have left will be more meaningful. That makes sense. But again, you still have to have that, that certain mindset. Like I'm, I'm trading decades of my life for a handful of years of relative power and safety. You got to make a character with that mindset. I'm going to let there you There are many ways this. to play a juicer and not, always, and not always crazy and loose cannon. Remember, you are hooked on a drug system. The computer will treat depression before you feel it. That's true. That's true. You're absolutely right. And that's one of the hardest parts to role play as a juicer. You have to role play the highs and lows that automatically happen because of your of your medical computer unit. Because when, when you're doing nothing and you're just sitting there, the, the computer will dose you up to with, with, uh, with uh, morphine, basically. I would think that if you're doing nothing, it's dosing you down. You're dosing Wait. up with morphine to bring you down. You're in you're in relax mode now, and then when if if something happens, it'll immediately give you uppers to bring you back. Right. So you have to role play these changes in your in your attitude and tone, if you want to role play a juicer. Right. Not everybody can do it. I, I'm just saying that I like what Kevin wrote in that book. That juicers don't just run around like, "Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, I'm no. juice, dude!" You know, all the time. Yeah. No, there, there, there's, there's a definite negative side to being a juicer. That yes, doesn't mean you have to be depressing as a character all the time. I'm just saying, no. you have every once in a while you have to role play the fact that you have a sword over your head, held up by a thin little, <laughs> a thin little piece of twine, sort yeah. of Damocles, in any moment. You could die any moment. You could just die. Every once in a while, you got to role play that if you want to play a juicer correctly. Oh, I just realized something. Uh, I need you to entertain the crowd again. I forgot one thing. Oh, you forgot one thing? All right. Just one. Yeah. Yes. Oh, here. Uh, Bruce said, not everyone is literate either. Well, we actually got through that. I mean, the only person, actually, nobody, nobody that we went through so far has literacy because we didn't go through rogue scientist, rogue scholar. The operator wasn't literate. Were those skills combined in the ultimate book? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm, a, I'm asking. I'm not, I'm, it see. could be. I don't know. It could be. But uh, I don't think they are because it would it would clarify that. And uh, all of the coalition, the, the coalition grunt has has uh, has language. Okay. okay. And they're not taught to read. Uh, tells people that learning to read is a gateway to depression because all the misinformation out. That's true. And all of the all of the public computers in the coalition are voice activated. So you don't have to read there either. And, and they have little uh, picto pictographs instead of words. So you don't need to read to use any public service. We got comments. So from last week's segment one, Riff's ultimate introduction, I yep. picked out three. Outstanding. So first of all, uh, first off, um, I'm going to say the name because he, the dog will love it. Francois de Rocher. Uh, although I don't necessarily agree with the uh, don't rift around the globe commentary, I developed the following blog post on my... Oh, I had you look at that blog post. That's yeah, right. I did. I did uh, look at it. For beginning GMs to answer the question, what book should I get depending on uh, the part of Rift's Earth my... I can't read for some reason. My settings my players wish to play in. I thought you uh, guys might enjoy and it. I did look over his website. And uh, if you want to, you can, you know, take that. Uh, actually, put it in chat if you want, something like that. Oh, I don't but, have it ready uh, to his, go. His website is, if you are based in, for example, you're based in North America. These are the books you need. These are the books you could get that will help. And these are the books that probably won't help you as much, but meh. It goes like that. If you're based in, in China, these are the books you need, the books you might want, and the books you probably don't need, but could be helpful in certain cer certain circumstances. And he goes through all of the different places in Rift's, in Rift's Earth and does that, which is nice. It's cool. I can dig it. I looked at it. It was good. I except except uh, he said uh, New West was recommended, which means the rest of his list is invalidated by by that one, <laughs> one bad comment. <laughs> New West is never needed for anything because it's an awful, awful book with awful, awful things in it. The worst, worst book ever. Okay, Michael Perez says, 
I just love riffs. And I hope you do creature area and background like the Mighty Glue Stick does. I don't know who the Mighty Glue Stick is. Do you watch that channel? I do not. Okay. Just lore video after lore video. Well, I mean, Total Party Skills does that as well. Yeah. <gasps> yes, I mentioned him. I don't hate him as much as he hates me. It's okay. Uh, that, that would rock and help people understand the setting. Where, well, guess what, Michael? For, just for you. Nobody's ever mentioned that before. So just for you, Heathen Dog has decided that in the year 2023, we are continuing the year of plating books in a little fashion. And small yes, way. yeah, in a small way. And yes, we're going to cover dimension books, uh, world books. Uh, we're going to go in the timeline of it, right? Like in the order yep. that, yep. Yeah. So starting at one, moving on. They're going to be little, little, little tiny bits, uh, big overviews. It's going to be like 15, 20 minutes top, stuff like that but to give the flavor of each world book or source book or whatever. And it, to, to let you know, if you want to integrate it in your campaign, you want to buy the book, you want to use it. And what, what does it have in it? Stuff like that. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't care if they're longer than 15, 20 minutes, but they're not going to be hour and a half long segments. No, uh, no. but uh, so yes, we are, we are going to do that. Why? Because why not? And people keep asking for it. Yeah. Cause we can. We and then, by the way, that's going to be segment two, starting in 2023. What's happening to the rants. We still have the Friday night chill stream. And comment three. Remember, I only picked three. Well, if there are three. Uh, this is a great video for the MD haters. I kept the SDC system in rifts, but MD weapons did double listed damage as SDC. And armor had triple listed MDC as SDC. So a 1D6 mega damage pistol dealt 2D6 SDC. 100 MDC armor had 300 SDC. And it worked really well. Really well. Now, before before before, before he the nut goes, because he knows way more about this than I do, I love house rules like this. Whether I agree with this specific one, doesn't matter. I love house rules like this. People taking control of their own games. All right, yes. go ahead. No, no, that's absolutely fine. Uh, he he decided he decided he didn't want to do it by the book and just multiply the MDC by a hundred to make it SDC. That's if you did it by the book. I mean, one d six MD would be one d six times a hundred technically but yeah, there, uh, there's a misconception I'm sorry yeah he didn't he didn't want uh he didn't want the the overpower he just wanted it to be stronger significantly <laughs> but not overpower and guess what it's your it's your campaign yeah you're not telling me how to do my campaign you can do your campaign however you want and it's completely legitimate so i have no problem if you if it worked really really well for you awesome i love yeah. it yeah exactly um myself like there's a misconception that i don't like mega damage no no no. I, I have no i have no issues with mega damage i specifically was looking to run a sci-fi setting in sdc only it isn't that i hate mega damage it because was just you didn't want to deal with it with his I, game that's yeah fine. so that that that's all i was looking for but yeah i i like mega because i think it makes sense i can shoot my nine millimeter all day and all the hell i can shoot this 45 all day and all night at a tank ain't nothing gonna happen they might be annoyed by the little pings bouncing off the arm, yeah. but it isn't going to bust through. Sleep. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, I mean, so I get the idea of mega damage. I just personally, what did I wanted a sci-fi game that didn't really go into that, even though it was going to still have mega damage, but that, that's outside the scope here. So anyway, those were the three comments that, uh, that we addressed here. So stop awesome. sharing. And, uh, I think that's the end of segment one. What do you think? Yeah. Do we have any proclivities we have to go through? We did it all at the beginning. I don't think we have anything we have to do at the end. Other than we should probably to tell the fine folks out there to like, subscribe, and share if you like this. And also let us know your thoughts about us going into 2023 and still doing Palladium. It won't be all of segment one. We've got other games for segment one that we're going to start picking up in 2023 again. But we're still going to continue on with Palladium series by going through the world books, the dimension books, the what are the other ones Source called? Books. Source books. 